interaction. As you know, several uh, components of national education policy uh, are being implemented across the country. And in national education policy, we are trying to provide to the students as much flexibility as possible so that they can receive holistic, integrated, and learner-centered education. And you know that with the rapid increase in the demand for high quality higher education, and uh, because we can only admit about 3% of the students in the physical campuses, there has been uh, many uh, developments in the area of open and distance learning um, and uh, online education. Many universities are now offering uh, both ODL and also online programs. And with the modified regulations for the online education, which we are going to announce in a couple of weeks, many top quality institutes in India, universities in India, will start offering online degrees also. Um, keeping uh, the need of the students to provide them multiple opportunities um, for them to acquire knowledge from multiple disciplines. Uh, in the commission, we have been uh, discussing about allowing the students to pursue two academic programs simultaneously. And in the last commission meeting held on 31st March, it was uh, discussed in uh, great detail. And the commission has uh, decided to issue um, guidelines which will enable the students to pursue two academic programs simultaneously, because you know that NEP 2020 emphasizes on the need to facilitate multiple pathways to learning um, involving both formal as well as the non-formal education modes, uh, in the sense that uh, a combination of physical mode as well as the online mode should be used uh, to give much more freedom to the students to acquire multiple skills. Keeping this in view, UGC has framed uh, new guidelines. And uh, we hope that uh, with these new guidelines, um, it will help the students in identifying and uh, uh, fostering the unique potential of uh, each student um, by taking different courses um, as they are part of the a physical university. So the guidelines will uh, the we hope that with these new guidelines, um, the students will be provided with an opportunity to acquire multidisciplinary and holistic education across the domains, such as sciences, social sciences, arts, humanities, um, and a wide variety of uh, uh, disciplines. So um, what are we going to allow these students as part of these new guidelines? Um, the new guidelines approved by the commission say that a student can pursue two full-time academic programs in physical mode, provided that in such cases, class timings for one program do not overlap with the class timings of the other program. This is a, um, a new initiative as part of the NEP implementation by the UGC. This means that 
if a student is doing, let's say, um, BA economics um, in as a day scholar, as a, as a hostler in a university in the physical mode, the student will also have the opportunity, for example, uh, to do another degree program of the same level in a nearby university, for example, maybe as an evening program. So this is this is going to provide newer opportunities to the students. In addition to this, the new guidelines say that it is not just only two physical programs um, simultaneously. A student can pursue two academic programs, one in full-time physical mode and another in open and distance learning mode or online mode, or up to two ODL or online programs simultaneously. So what these guidelines are saying that a student can do two academic programs simultaneously in a physical mode in two different universities or in the same university, or the students can do a program in a physical mode in a university, but another program in the online mode, or the third choice for the student is that um, if a student is doing one online program, they can do another online program simultaneously. So we hope that with this kind of flexibility um, given by the new education policy, it will empower um, many students to acquire new knowledge across the uh, domains. We are also saying that uh, uh, these guidelines will come into effect once the UGC announces it uh, on its website. website. Um, the degree or diploma programs under these guidelines shall be governed by the regulations notified by the UGC from time to time. And they, they, they are also um, uh, governed by the respective statutory and professional councils wherever uh, applicable. So these guidelines can be adopted by the statutory bodies of the uh, higher educational institutes um, so that students are enabled to pursue two academic programs simultaneously as I have described. Uh, friends, this is what I wanted to inform you. And if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and put your question. Any of you can unmute yourself if you have any questions. So uh, we wanted to know uh, when will these guidelines be visible on the UGC website? Um, they will be posted uh, tomorrow on UGC website. Hello. So yes. would there be compulsory attendance for both the programs that student would be attending simultaneously? And how much would be the compulsory attendance for that? Thank you. The attendance policy will be decided by the respective universities. UGC uh, doesn't mandate uh, any such uh, requirements because these are uh, the policies of the universities. Uh, sir, this will be applicable from this academic year, 22 Yes, this is applicable prospectively. It cannot be used uh, uh, you know, retrospectively. Sir, this is Prashant Nanda. Uh, yeah. I have a... Uh, sir, uh, one small thing. Uh, mm. While uh, considering the, the enrollment numbers in higher education, mm -hmm. uh, we have never faced a situation like this where you are giving this flexibility. So since I, suppose I want to pursue two degrees at the same time, right. should I also be considered as two numbers while calculating the, the, the GER of the country? Um, I do not think so, because it okay. is the same student. Okay, okay. thank you. Sir. So have you held any consultations with universities on this, which uh, institutes or universities have agreed to go with this kind of flexibility? Um, well, this is optional to the universities. This is not mandatory. Uh, right. Unless the statutory bodies approve these guidelines, um, the universities cannot implement. But sir, have you got any uh, feedback so far from any institutes on this? 
as we have been doing uh, with the national education policy implementation um, uh, these are all only uh, through consultations sir manas here from the times of india Mm -hmm. uh, uh sir uh, what about the admission pr process will the will the guidelines be uh, saying about the admission process also for all the programs and uh... right so if it is a physical mode admission uh, two simultaneous degrees uh, if the student is willing to do in two different universities then the admission policy will be decided by those respective universities and if it is online program as you know in the modified online uh, program regulations we have made it very clear that anybody who has passed um, their plus 2 are eligible to join in the online programs sir one more question i have uh, uh, will they be in the format of the four year undergraduate program where students can actually exit one program and if, if he is getting if he or she is having problem Uh, pursuing simultaneous and come back to the program after two years or one year or three years. So the multi-entry, multi-exit uh, reform that uh, UGC has introduced as part of NEP 2020 is applicable to all the programs, whether it is in the physical mode or in the online mode. Whether you are pursuing only single degree or two degrees simultaneously, they are applicable to all the programs. And uh, the guidelines are only hello. And the, and the guidelines are only for the undergraduate programs or it, it is also for the masters and the uh, degree also right so it is applicable to any program uh, it could be two diploma programs simultaneously two undergraduate programs simultaneously or two postgraduate programs simultaneously thank you sir uh, sir namaskar sir sir, sir this is kritika sir se. yeah after sushil uh, kritika सर uh, uh, पहला तो सवाल मेरा ये है कि क्या ये इसी uh, सत्र से शुरू हो जाएगा ये uh, ये व्यवस्था दूसरा सवाल ये है कि क्या uh, uh, एक छात्र दो डिग्री uh, यानी कि एक बैचलर और एक मास्टर डिग्री एक साथ कर सकता है क्या दिस इज एन ऑप्शनल चॉइस गिवन टू द स्टूडेंट्स इफ सम स्टूडेंट्स वांट्स टू वांट टू डू टू degree simultaneously we are providing this option for example let's say there is a student uh, who is doing bsc mathematics and uh, the same student also wants to do um, bsc in data science simultaneously so that is a possibility or if i am doing um, ba economics but i am so deeply interested in history i want to do a simultaneous degree in history then there is a possibility so we are only providing this as an option to the students and to the higher educational institutes sir i had one more question is uh, in terms of the recognition of these degrees uh, who will provide the degrees and also i would like to know uh, does this have any link with cuet which is going to be conducted when it comes to the admission procedures because you said that the individual universities will decide on uh, whom they need to admit uh, in terms of uh, correct students. correct so it is nothing to do with cuet um, it is about pursuing two degrees simultaneously if it is an online degree obviously there is no entrance examination if there are if there is one physical degree and one online degree for the physical degree the student has to follow whatever is the admission policy of the university if the university is saying that you have to clear cuet to get admission in the physical mode then the student has to clear cuet sir one more question i have uh, sir, this is kritika sharma can i can okay. i please uh, ask a question uh, yeah okay. kritika please go ahead Yes, sir. Sir, uh, my question was also regarding the nature of the programs. I think you said some time back that if the student wants to pursue two simultaneous programs in mathematics and economics, they will be allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So, how is that going to happen? You said I think that the statutory bodies will also be informed about uh, such a nature of the uh, you know the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So, how is that going to come together? What will be the range or the kind of programs that students can pursue together? Can they mix humanities and sciences and technical? courses yes um, absolutely once we announce the guidelines uh, the guidelines will come into force 
and okay. the respective uh, higher educational institutes have to adopt these guidelines in their statutory bodies and prepare appropriate ordinances academic ordinances and uh, with respect to the combination of programs which two programs the students can do let's say in physical mode it depends on the eligibility of the student uh, decided by the respective universities so it's not a random choice the student also has to check whether uh, she he or she is eligible to pursue uh, these two programs uh, sir one okay, more sir, question sir, so one more question uh, sir Mithika. sir is it is it going to be called a dual degree or was what is what will be the nomenclature of such a program uh, well it is the, the student is going to have uh, two degrees Ten, that is what we are saying minute mein aa jayegi jaldi de dijiye two okay. degrees so two degrees right okay okay so so what is the official name of the program is it like a two degree program that's what the ugc is calling right it? for example i may have a ba and i may have a bcom right okay so there are two okay. different degrees sure sir uh, so i'm here I'm... from uh, india today uh, yes please go ahead sir uh, uh, already there are few universities uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are complaining about that they don't have adequate teaching staff and professors don't you think that this dual degree program will uh, add some extra burden uh, because number of enrollments will obviously rise and they have to take care of additional uh, things as well so how uh, universities will manage the workload uh, thing uh, various universities are complaining about it. correct uh, so it's an important question let us take one by one let us say a student wants to do uh two uh, simultaneous degrees in physical mode and this is possible only if uh, these two institutes are located close to each other right if one is located uh, in at point a and the other one is located in another city obviously the student yeah. cannot do uh two simultaneous degrees in physical mode but it is possible for a student who is doing physical mode degree in a particular university to register in an online degree so if i am yeah. registering in an online degree i am not going to put any pressure in the university that i am studying right because that university is anyway offering uh, this physical mode degree and if a student is studying uh, two simultaneous degrees in online mode it's not going to put any pressure at all because the idea in the online mode education is that there will be unlimited seats so i do not see um any extra pressure coming on the institutes with the introduction of this option for the students to pursue a uh, two academic programs simultaneously sir one related question to this that mm -hmm. uh, since you are telling that uh, your focus will be online mode of education from now on so uh, do you think that now higher in higher education you are going to experiment more with the online education program rather than the offline mode no i didn't say that our focus will be only on online education both physical education and online education both are important the physical mode higher educational institutes will continue to be constructed um and students will keep joining there our um, approach here is that even if you have the physical universities typically we admit only 3 or 4% of the total applicants and to provide an opportunity for the rest of the student community um we are empowering some of the best universities in the country to start the online degree programs and in addition to this we are also working on establishing a national digital university which will ultimately come through an act of parliament and it will be uh, uh, declared as an institute of national importance so both physical mode education and also online mode education have to go hand in hand in order to meet the aspirations of our students sir one uh, uh, sorry basant uh, i think basant is yeah basant carry on carry on basant yeah. no no yeah yeah no quick i am just asking a small clarification as you as i understand is that uh, in right. physical mode hmm. there cannot be from one single university a student cannot have both uh, simultaneous degree from the same university in physical mode what you are saying is that in physical mode he will be enrolled in one university and uh, he has to go, if he has to do a physical mode in another degree that will be another university 
Uh, am I correct, sir, on this understanding? You, you, you are right. But however, if a particular university decides uh, to permit a student to uh, do two simultaneous physical mode degrees, it is up to the university. Our guidelines are silent on that. For example, if a university has an evening program, BCom, but during the daytime it has a BA, and it permits the students to do both the programs, it is left to the uh, university to decide on that. Okay. Okay. The, the, one, the, the idea is that let us provide as much flexibility as possible and let us empower our students. Oh, yeah. Well, one more thing I was asking that what is the objective of this uh, permission? Uh, earlier, I think only one diploma was being allowed in addition to the uh, uh, one, one full credit degree. Now we are allowing two simultaneous degree. Uh, is it that the existing degree program at undergraduate or at MA, does it have that much of scope for the student? To pursue another degree, has has any study been done that this this uh, program has been designed in a way that a student can actually focus uh, with uh, rigor on another similar degree? Uh, have you come across such uh, kind of uh, conclusion? Uh, first of all, uh, these guidelines are part of the implementation of the national education policy, where uh, the national education policy says that to provide as much flexibility as possible to the students uh, to personalize their education, to customize their education so that they can receive multidisciplinary and holistic education across the disciplines. So it of course depends on the capability of the student, whether uh, he or she can do two degrees simultaneously. If the student is, uh, um, uh, you know, is busy doing only one program and obviously the student will do only one program. But if a student feels that they are capable of doing um, an additional program in the evening while studying during daytime um, uh, one program, or if the student feels that, well, I'm doing my physical program, but simultaneously let me also use my evenings to do an online program. Um, it is well within the uh, purview of these guidelines. But however, it all depends on the choice that the student makes. Okay, okay. one more thing. Uh, 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 yes, only then uh, somebody else. Uh, is there any foreign university which we are looking for as you know any QS ranked uh, top hundred institutions in the world or mm -hmm. PhD ranked institutions in the in the world? Mm -hmm. if, has there been any example of any university having this kind of double degree, simultaneous degree uh, offering to their students? I do not know, but perhaps if, if there is no such example, perhaps India will become an example uh, to the other countries to give as much freedom and opportunity to the students uh, to study across the multidisciplinary domain. Sir, suppose that Hello, sir. Uh, a student... Sir, I'm Jagruti from the Hindu. Hindu. Okay, Jagruti. Uh, let, us, yes, sir. let us take from Jagruti and then I will come to Kunal. Okay. Um, so, sir, you mentioned that this will allow a student to, to pursue two degrees. So, are we mm. talking about graduation and undergrad and postgrad levels? No, it has to be at the same level. Um, yeah. So, one under, two simultaneously undergraduate level programs or two postgraduate programs because uh, if I'm just doing only one undergraduate program, I will not have the eligibility to do the master's program unless I complete yeah. my undergraduate program. Okay. So, so this applies to be, uh, uh, bachelor's and master's, not to MPhil, PhD. This is just these two <laughs> levels. Yeah. Well, this is only for lecture-based uh, courses, such as okay. uh, undergraduate and master's programs, um, maybe uh, diplomas also. Right. Diplomas. Also, sir, uh, this you've been asked this question. Um, from this current academic session, it will be implemented. Uh, can you also tell us what are the next steps of implementation once the guidelines are uh, out? Once the guidelines are um, announced, uh, we'll be informing all the higher educational institutions and the higher educational institutions, they, they, they then have to take it to their statutory bodies and adopt them and formulate appropriate academic ordinances to enable the students uh, to do uh, two programs simultaneously. So that is the standard procedure. Sir, one Hello, uh, sir. My question from, uh, uh, from you. Kunal, mm -hmm. sir, uh, you have as you have said that it is not mandatory for every university to adopt this guideline. Right. Suppose that a student is pursuing his degree one from University A, mm -hmm. and he want to do a degree two from University B. Mm -hmm. 
right. but university a is not allowing him to pursue another degree from university b in mm -hmm. such a circumstances mm -hmm. what will be the guidelines uh, well it is left to the universities after all their autonomous uh, uh, entities and their statutory bodies have to discuss this and they have to enable their students to have this kind of uh, flexible education and since we are in the process of implementing the national education policy and we are in discussion with the vice chancellors across the country um, uh, we hope that uh, this kind of flexibility will be provided to the students hello sir uh, roshni from india today Rashmi. so i i have a question regarding you were saying that uh, if we want to do two degrees mm. and they both have to be at undergraduate or at postgraduate levels right. so let's say that this year i am uh, getting admitted to a bachelor's ba course mm -hmm. and the next year in my second year of my ba course i want to get admitted to a bcom course mm -hmm. in the evening which is not mm -hmm. there in the same time slot right. so is is that possible or does it have to be started in the same year absolutely uh, not required at all that is the idea of providing flexibility let's say i am doing my ba and at the end of second year while i am entering the third year at that stage i decide to start a new Uh, bachelor's degree program i think the student should be given freedom to do that we should not put too many restrictions that both the program should start simultaneously both should end at the same time um, all those restrictions should not be there there should be as much flexibility as possible to the students okay sir so i can do one degree and one diploma one degree one certificate any combination that yes, you like yes yes any combination is possible okay thank you sir i have a question uh, hello sir but uh, so this is tan Hmm. So one small question. Yes. Uh, so are all our undergraduate courses were designed in a way that doesn't really allow a student to take up two courses? I mean, at the same time. I mean, they were designed at a time when when you did not have this particular structure. Mm -hmm. So going ahead, do you think our UG courses or PG courses need to be redesigned? And are you planning to do that to allow this kind? I mean, to to have more takers for this uh, new concept? uh you see if i am doing two online programs simultaneously there is absolutely no problem if i am doing one physical program and one online program i can always participate in the online program in the evening or in the night because it's at 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 my will when i will play the videos and study and participate in the evaluations so the physical program is not going to decide my online program but if i am planning to do two physical programs at the same time simultaneously um that is when the student has to see whether there will be a clash of timings class timings and if there is a clash of timings then obviously the student cannot do so um two physical mode or degrees are possible for example just to give you uh, uh, a, a realistic example let's say a student in iit delhi does his btech in iit but he wants to take um, uh, some courses an undergraduate program in B ba let's say in french language or ba in german language and if that is offered in evening program as an evening program in physical mode in jnu the student can just walk across the road and in the morning they can do one undergraduate program in one institute and in the evening they can do in physical mode the other uh, uh, program but doing two uh, physical mode programs is going to be really difficult for a student because it's very rarely that two uh, top institutes are sitting next to each other so what i see as a possibility is that the students while doing their physical mode degree they can actually simultaneously do one online degree program also uh, which i think is a great opportunity for the students to expand their knowledge and skill set during examinations dates might overlap have you taken that into account so typically an evening program i assume that their exams are also in the evening right mm -hmm. so it is up to the institutes uh, to decide for example if two institutes have um, an mou right and if they have decided to let each other's students to do uh, two simultaneous degrees they can then work out the timetable schedules exam schedules and so on thank you 
Uh, hello, sir. Tanvi Desai from Prasar Bharti. Uh, yeah. So my question is first that uh, why UGC is offering like dual degree pro uh, right now this program right now. What is the bigger prospect? And another is about the financial flexibility. Another is yes. about the financial flexibility yes. as a student yes. is pursuing two courses simultaneously. One has to pay the fee for both. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is is UGC considering and putting that in account as well? Um, you see, in JNU the tuition fee is 300 rupees per year. So if I'm a student in JNU, um, if I can do an online program, it doesn't really put much uh, uh, financial stress on me because online programs are also expected to be um, very, very affordable. Sir, uh, I have one more question here. Manish. Last question. Uh, suppose sir, a student is doing a BCom and an economic honors course. Mm -hmm. uh, become honors and economic honors. There are uh, many components within the economics, uh, study of economics, which are common. Right. Now, through academic bank of credit, a student is expected to earn some credit in a certain mod uh, module and uh, transfer them to the academic bank of credit. Suppo mm -hmm. Suppose in such a situation, mm -hmm. uh, can the students, the same, students actually pursue two, these two degrees and, have, and earn the same credit for both the degrees? Uh, no, no, no. Each degree has its own credit requirements and they have to fulfill um, those credit requirements. They cannot uh, use one set of credits um, and then use it for two degrees. Okay. Sir, so one question. I one think last with, question. With Roshni, we will conclude now. Yeah, Roshni, please go ahead. Yes, sir. No, sir, people uh, share from Republic TV. I have one question. Uh, after yes. Roshni, I can ask. Sir. Okay, okay, right. Sir, uh, I wanted to ask about seat allotment and seat numbers. In case this is just for the physical mode of education, if I'm doing two degrees in physical mode, so will seat allotment and the number of seats be a factor during admission? Like, is there going to be a discrimination for students who are uh, like who, who are doing two degrees rather than a student who is just pursuing one degree? See, the admission policy is entirely decided by the respective universities. And when if, if I am doing a physical mode degree, and if I am planning to do another physical mode degree in a nearby college, I had to follow the admission procedure of that college. I had to compete there. Maybe I had to write a CUET there if that college says you require CUET score, or they may use some other means of admission. So it all depends on the admission policies of the respective colleges. Okay, sir. Piyush. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. My question is uh, different from this subject. So time and again, UGC has been issuing uh, uh, note in guidelines regarding the safety and safety of students. Sir. But mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing uh, the violent incidents taking place at the university campuses, premises. Any guidelines for that, sir? In JNU recently, we saw what happened there on the occasion of uh, Ram Navami. Any fresh guidelines regarding that, sir? Uh, well, every university has its own uh, safety and security guidelines. And uh, whenever such incidents uh, happen, the administration looks into uh, uh, the reasons for that. And then there is a, uh, uh, you know, a proctor in every university and uh, they will inquire into all aspects of such incidents and make sure that such incidents do not happen in future. And any kind of violence in any campus uh, should be completely avoided. Uh, sir, I have a small question. Can I ask it? Mm, anything related to the two uh, simultaneous degree programs? I, I'll, I'll try to restrict myself to that. Okay. What I wanted to know was that, for example, you have, uh, this is a wonderful program that you are starting. Mm -hmm. So do you have to plan to expand it to, for example, at the PhD level also? For example, if I have done, uh, I have a MSc honors degree in biophysics. So can mm -hmm. I... Can I pursue, uh, can I get a, uh, can I enroll myself for a PhD degree in some other subject? Because I think that is not permissible right now. So I was just wondering, like, mm -hmm. I, I tried doing that this year. So <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so again, um, and this is uh, Vibha Sharma. Right. Um, I work it, for the Tribune. Yeah. And I tried to enroll myself for the PhD this, this year, but I was told right. since I have a degree um, in our, a different subject. Our hope is that as national education policy is implemented, more and more universities will open up and permit the students to work across the uh, boundaries. You know, in that respect, uh, in many programs in uh, JNU, 
uh, students across the disciplines are, um, are taken and this is happening um, even in IITs also. Um, but there are certain disciplines where the student is expected to have background in that particular discipline. Uh, for example, if I want to do a PhD in economics and if all through my life I have studied only biology uh, or some other subject, uh, then I may not be able to do uh, a PhD in economics. And that's the reason why universities often say that uh, you should have appropriate academic background before you join in a PhD program. But however, um, there are areas, um, let's say a PhD in electrical engineering, sometimes we take students with MSc in physics, uh, but then we give them additional courses, uh, which uh, the student has to mandatorily complete uh, in order to improve their knowledge of electrical engineering and then pursue their PhD program. All right, thank you. Right, so with those, uh, I think Viva Sharma had uh, her uh, last word. I would like to thank all of you for joining on this platform. And I hope that we will have more such meetings and interactions with each other. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you for your time.